Greetings, everybody. Chaplain Bob Walker here. Light of the World Ministries in John 8, 12. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. And in this world of darkness, we can sure use the light of the world. Today is October 11. We missed Milton, and uh, thank you for your prayers. Uh, Charles and Susan both made it okay. Boy, that's that's a relief. Um, believe it or not, I've met a couple of listeners, and some I haven't, but uh, appreciate the support and prayers from everyone. I really do. This Bible study is going to be on, I guess it's going to be Armies of the Lord Part 3. Uh, now, if you're interested in what I'm getting ready to cover, I did an hour and 40 minute study on the prophet Elijah. How do you spell Elijah? E-L-I-J-A-H. E L I J A H. E L, when you look it up, has reference to God. Have you ever seen El Shaddai and, uh, let's see, I can't think of. The Lord has a lot of different names in the Bible. Uh, you got L Tzedek, T Z A D D I K. That's in Isaiah 45, 21. Uh, Tzedek means just or righteous. So that means God is righteous. El Shaddai um, has reference to the all-sufficient God. El, El Yon means the most high God. El Olam the everlasting God. El Roy, Roy, uh, the God who sees me. Uh, yeah, so, you know, you can see a bunch of different uh, meanings. Hmm. El Israel, Psalm 6836. El El Salai, Psalms 42, verse 9. So, yeah. And then you got Emmanuel, God with us. Okay, so when you see Michael or Gabriel, I'm not exactly sure what they mean, but it has reference to, I think, I think Michael means Prince of God, if I remember correctly. I'm not sure about Gabriel. Uh, maybe I should look it up, huh? Oh, okay. According to some... Gabriel means God is my strength or hero of God. Hmm. Interesting. Okay. Uh, because it was Gabriel that uh, went to the father of John the Baptist and told him he was going to have a son. And uh, yeah. Yeah. So, and I, he was also, Gabriel also appeared to Daniel in the book of Daniel. So God's angels have different things that they do to assist. In Matthew chapter 18, in verse 10, 
Jesus says, Take heed that ye despise not one of these little ones. You know, children. He says, Pay attention. Don't hate these little ones. For I say unto you, that in heaven their angels, their angels, whose angels? The little one's angels. That in heaven their angels do always behold the face of my Father, which is in heaven. Hmm. Do you believe in guardian angels for children? I do. That's the only reason I'm as old as I am today is because I had a, I believe I had a guardian angel looking out after me when I was a stupid kid. Boy, I did some stupid things. I almost uh, accidentally hung myself once. Uh, used to watch the Western programs and I made a noose and tied it up in a tree. Well, then I slipped and my neck went into the noose. But because I uh, swung around, I fell out. But I almost hung myself. You know, family would have thought, why? Why did Bob hang himself? Uh, all I know is my guardian angel must have given me a push to keep my neck from... Uh, yeah, stupid kid. Oh, boy. If they were giving out doctorate degrees in stupidity, I would have had a double PhD. Oh, yeah. So, let's see. In Mark chapter 9, verse 42, Jesus said, And whosoever shall offend one of these little ones, children, that believe in me, it is better for him that a millstone were hanged about his neck and he were cast into the sea. Do children have guardian angels? I think so. And just because the Catholic Church uh, teaches some things doesn't mean they're wrong on everything. So, all right. Um, so angels look out after us but if you look at the name for Elijah I believe if if my memory serves me correctly Elijah means God is Yah let me make sure of that I think that's what it means which is where they get Yahovah Yahweh um, I don't no, if those are the correct pronunciations. Emmanuel and Jesus, I'm almost positive of. So that's why I would rather use that than some Yahweh, Yehovah, whatever, because nobody, I don't think anybody on earth is 100% sure of that. All right, seems I was right. Elijah means Yah is God. So... Um, hmm, excellent. All right, so how would you, how would you like to be named, uh, <laughs> Elijah, you know? Wow, Yah is God. So let's took, like I say, I got a four hour and 40 minute, uh, Bible study on Elijah, the prophet, who confronted King Ahab, possibly one of the one of the most wicked kings in Israel, if not the most wicked king of Israel, and um, Elijah never died. He was taken up into heaven in a whirlwind of a chariot of fire and horses, horses and chariots of fire. Well, a chariot of horse and of horses and fire or maybe a horse i'm not sure but he's taken up in a chariot with, driven by at least one horse maybe two or three i don't know a fire so um we're gonna take a look and uh let's see what we come up with all right everybody turn your king james bible to second kings chapter two old testament book you know, there's a lot of jewels in the Old Testament. 
And the Old Testament is, if I remember correctly, it is about three quarters of the Bible. It is a lot of information. It's the foundation of our faith. All right, 2 Kings chapter 2, verse 1. And it came to pass when the Lord would take Elijah into heaven by a whirlwind, that Elijah went with Elisha, E-L-I-S-H-A, from Gilgal. Uh, so you got God is Yah. And what does Elisha mean? It means God is my salvation. So you got Yah is God and God is my salvation. Uh, their names. You know, there's a lot of um, people in the Bible that their names had meanings and uh, had direct application to their lives. I think it was King David married Abigail. I think it was Abigail after her husband Nabob or Nabal, Nabal, I think it was, uh, died. His name means fool. Because when King David was running away from King Saul, you know, uh, David had killed Goliath and saved Israel from the Philistines. And here it is, his, his men had been uh, protecting the area that Nabal lived in. And Nabal was very rich. He had a lot of stuff. He couldn't possibly even use everything he had in a lifetime. And when David's men were sent from David to Nabal to ask for some provisions, he refused to give him anything. Nothing. And David says, well, I'm going to take off this fool's head. And uh, he was getting ready to, with his men, and uh, Abigail heard what had happened, and I think it was Abigail. Correct me if I'm wrong. But she took a bunch of stuff and put it on a, an ass, and some bread and fruit and whatever else she had prepared, could prepare. And she went down to meet David and bowed down before him and uh, gave him all the stuff. And then the next day she told her husband, the fool, what she had done because David was getting ready to kill him. So to keep David from killing him, the Lord struck him down dead. At least that's how I see it. So, yeah. I mean, David kept Israel from being slaves to the Philistines. Via the Lord, of course. And how did Nabal repay him? To, yeah, I'm not going to do nothing for you people. So, you know... The Lord is not mocked. All right, so. And it came to pass when the Lord would take up Elijah into heaven by a whirlwind that Elijah went with Elisha from Gilgal. And Elijah said unto Elisha, Tarry here, I pray thee. You know, stay here. For the Lord has sent me to Bethel. Bethel, E-L. What is Bethel? Well, Beth, Beth means house. You ever meet a girl named Beth? You'll know her name is Hebrew name meaning house. E-L, house of God. That's what Bethel means, the house of God. And Elisha said unto him, As the Lord liveth and as my soul liveth, I will not leave thee. So Elijah told his younger prophet partner, hey, stay here. I'm going to go to Bethel. 
And his younger partner says, no, nope, I'm not going to wait here. I'm going Wherever you go, I'm going with you. So, as the Lord liveth and as thy soul liveth, I will not leave thee. So they went down to Bethel. Verse 3. And the sons of the prophets that were at Bethel came forth to Elisha and said unto him, Knowest thou that the Lord will take away thy master from thy head today? And he said, Yea, I know it. Hold your peace. Yeah, yeah, I know. Keep quiet. Well, that would be the Bob translation. So, And Elisha said unto him, verse 6, Terry, I pray thee here, for the Lord hath sent me to Jordan. Um, oh, wait a minute. To Jordan. Wait, wait a minute. Did I miss something? No, I'm sorry. Verse 4. Verse 4. And Elisha said unto him, Elisha, Elisha, tarry here, I pray thee, for the Lord hath sent me to Jericho. And he said, As the Lord liveth, and as thy soul liveth, I will not leave thee. So they came to Jericho. And the sons of the prophets that were at Jericho came to Elisha and said unto him, Knowest thou that the Lord will take away thy master from thy head today? And he answered, Yea, I know it. Hold, your, hold ye your peace. Verse 6. And Elisha said unto him, Terry, I pray thee here, for the Lord hath sent me to Jordan. And he said, As the Lord liveth, and as thy, my, thy soul liveth, I will not leave thee. And the two went on. And fifty men of the sons of the prophets went and stood to view afar off. And they too stood by Jordan. And Elijah took his mantle and wrapped it together and smote the waters, and they were divided hither and thither, so that they too went over on dry ground. Remember, this is basically what Moses did to the Red Sea when Israel crossed. You know? So, the waters were divided, and they went over on dry ground. Verse 9. And it came to, came to pass, when they were gone over, that Elijah said unto Elisha, Ask, what shall I do for thee before I be taken away from thee? Hey, what can I do for you before I leave, right? And Elisha said, I pray thee, let a double portion of thy spirit be upon me. What you have, I want double. I want double, two times the Holy Ghost power. Whoop doggy, do you know what you're asking, buddy boy? Verse 10, and he said, Thou hast asked a hard thing. <laughs> oh boy. Nevertheless, if thou see me when I am taken from thee, it shall be so. But if not, it shall not be so. So if you see me taken away, the Lord's going to grant your wish. But if you don't see me taken away, your wish has been denied. Well, that's the Bob translation. Verse 11, And it came to pass, as they still went on and talked, that, behold, there appeared a chariot of fire and horses of fire. So, all right, so there was at least two horses, if not more. And they parted them both asunder, and Elijah went up into heaven into a whirlwind. Now, remember, Elisha is going to be one of the two witnesses that confronts the be uh, the false prophet and the beast. It's going to be one of the two witnesses in the book of Revelation. Oh, yeah. And that's in that hour and 40-minute study that I did on Elijah. Matter of fact, when I went to Bible college, we had to pick an, a prophet of the Bible and do a study on him, a book report. I picked Elijah. I picked Elijah because he did a lot of things. So, all right, so Elijah is going up into heaven in a chariot of fire and a whirlwind into heaven. Verse 12. 
And Elisha saw it. So his wish for double, double portion came to pass. The Lord granted it to him. And Elisha saw it and he cried, My father, my father, the chariot of Israel and the horsemen thereof. And he saw him no more. And he took hold of his own clothes and rent them in two pieces. He took up also the mantle of Elijah that fell from him and went back and stood by the bank of Jordan. And he took the mantle of Elijah that fell from him and smote the waters and said, Where is the Lord God of Elijah? And when he had also smitten the waters, they parted hither and thither, and Elisha went over. And when the sons of the prophets, which were to view at Jericho, saw him, they said, The spirits of Elijah doth rest on Elisha. And they came to meet him and bowed themselves to the ground before him. And they said unto him, Behold now, there be with thy servants fifty strong men. Let them go, we pray thee, and seek thy master, lest peradventure the Spirit of the Lord hath taken him up and cast him upon some mountain or into some valley. And he said, Ye shall not send. And when they had urged him till he was ashamed, he said, Send. They sent therefore fifty men, and they sought three days, but found him not. And when they came again to him, for he tarried at Jericho, he said unto them, Did I not say unto you, Go not? And uh, let's see. Verse 19. And the men of the city said unto Elisha, Behold, I pray thee, the situation of the city is pleasant, as my lord seeth, but the water is not, and the ground barren. In other words, the water's bad. Verse 20, And he said, Bring me a new cruise water container, and put salt therein. And he brought it to them, brought it to him. And he went forth unto the spring of the waters, and cast the salt in there. And he said, and said, Thus saith the Lord, I have healed these waters. There shall not be from thence any more death or barren land. So the waters were healed unto this day, according to the saying of Elisha, which he spake. All right, let's go to Second Kings chapter 6, verse 1. And the sons of the prophets said unto Elisha, Behold now, the place where we dwell with thee is too straight for us. In other words, it's too small. Let us go, we pray thee, unto Jordan, and take thence every man a beam, and let us make us a place there where we may dwell. And he answered, Go ye. And one said, Be content, I pray thee, and go with thy servants. And he answered, I will go. So he went with them, and they came to Jordan. They cut down wood. And as one was felling a beam, the axe head fell into the water. And he cried and said, Alas, master, for it was borrowed. And the man of God said, Where fell it? And he showed him the place, and he cut down a stick and cast it thither, and the iron did swim. Can you imagine that? An iron axe head floating? Yeah. Therefore said he, Take it up to thee, and he put out his hand, and he took it. Then the king of Syria, now remember, the Assyrians uh, gave Israel a lot of trouble in the days when they fell into apostasy. Actually, the Assyrians uh, took Israel captive and they never returned to the land and parts of Judah too some of Judah's fence cities but eventually they went to um, Jerusalem and besieged it surrounded it and wouldn't let anybody come in or go out and uh, that's another story we're gonna maybe we'll cover that 
So, verse 8. Then the king of Syria warred against Israel and took counsel with his servants, saying, In such and such a place shall be my camp. And the man of God sent unto the king of Israel, saying, Beware that thou pass not such a place, for thither the Syrians come, are come down. And the king of Israel sent to the place where the man of God told him and warned him of and saved himself there not once or twice. Therefore the heart of the king of Syria was sore troubled for this thing, and he called his servants and said unto them, Will ye not show me which of us is for the king of Israel? In other words, uh, he thinks there's a spy among them telling the king of Israel what's going on. Verse 12. And one of the servants said, None, my lord, O king, but Elisha the prophet that is in Israel telleth the king of Israel the words that thou speakest in thy bedchamber. And he, the king, said, Go and spy where he is, that I may send and fetch him. And it was told him, saying, Behold, he is in Dothan. Therefore sent he thither horses and chariots and a great host. A host is an army. And they came by night and compassed the city about. They surrounded the city. And when the servant of the man of God was risen early and gone forth, behold, an host compassed the city, both with horses and chariots, and his servant said unto him, Alas, my master, how shall we do? So evidently, Elisha has a, uh, a companion, a servant. And he's saying, what in the world are we going to do? Verse 16, And he, Elisha, answered, Fear not, for they that be with us are more than they that be with them. What? We're in this little tiny town and we're surrounded by this huge army. What are you talking about, Elisha? Well, that's the idea, right? Verse 17. And Elisha prayed and said, listen to this. Well, you know what? Let's read something first. Let's take a look at Paul in Ephesians chapter 3. Paul wrote a letter to the... Um, city of Ephesus. They were called Ephesians. Ephesians chapter 3, verse 16. That he would grant you, according to the riches of his glory, to be strengthened by might, by his spirit, in the inner man. Now remember, you are a soul, a spirit, and a body. Our body occupies this earthly plane, our soul and spirit is part of the world and part of the spirit world. To, all right, we're going to cover that a little bit more. Verse 17, that Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith, that ye being rooted and grounded in love may be able to comprehend with all saints what is the breadth and length, and depth, and height. Uh, did you catch that? Breadth, length, depth, and height. Paul says there's four dimensions. There's only three in this physical world. Three dimensions. Look it up. Type in to Google in three dimensions. See what pops up. Length, width, and height. Paul says there's four. Is one of these the spirit realm where angels dwell that our physical eyes can't see? I believe so. Can I prove it conclusively from the Bible? No, but you read between the lines. May be able to comprehend with all saints what is the breadth and length and depth and height and to know the love of Christ which passeth, passeth knowledge that ye may that ye might be filled with all the fullness of God. All right, let's go back. Second Kings chapter six and verse 
16. Now remember, the city is surrounded. And he, Elisha, answered, Fear not, for they that be with us are more than that uh, than they that be with them. And Elisha prayed and said, Lord, I pray thee, open his eyes. So he's going to have his eyes open to see the spirit world. I pray thee, open his eyes that he may see. And the Lord opened the eyes of the young man, and he saw, and behold, the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire round about Elisha. Whoa. The armies of the Lord on earth. Whoa. When's the last time you ever heard this preached in church, huh? No, they don't preach this kind of stuff. See, I like doing the stuff that nobody else really covers. You know, and, you know, it's important. And when they came down to him, Elisha prayed unto the Lord and said, Smite this people, the Assyrians. I pray thee with blindness. And he smote them with blindness according to the word of Elisha. Now, let me tell you something. I was in the army. And if you're blind, it's impossible to fight, isn't it? Yeah. Verse 19. So here it is, the entire army is blind. And Elisha said unto them, This is not the way. Neither is this the city. Follow me, and I will bring you to the man whom you seek. But he led them to Samaria. And it came to pass, when they were come into Samaria, that Elisha said, Lord, open the eyes of these men, that they may see. And the Lord opened their eyes, and they saw, and behold, they were in the midst of Samaria. Now, Samaria was the capital of northern Israel. Jerusalem was the capital of Israel. Uh, Judah. So here it is. They're in the middle of the capital of Israel, the capital city. You know there's an army that's all around the Syrians. I mean, you know, you're not just going to let them waltz into the city without your soldiers there to protect the city, right? And it came to pass when they were coming to Samaria and Elisha said, Lord, open the eyes of these men that they may see. And the Lord opened their eyes and they saw and behold, they were in the midst of Samaria. And the king of Israel said unto Elisha when he saw them, my father, shall I smite them? Shall I smite them? So, you know, shall I kill them? And he, Elisha answered, thou shalt not smite them. Wouldst thou smite those whom thou hast taken captive with thy sword and with thy bow? Set bread and water before them that they may eat and drink and go to their master. Boy, is this a uh, an act of mercy or what? And he, the king, I guess, prepared great provision for them. And when they had eaten and drunk, he sent them away and sent, and they went to their master so the bands of Syria came no more into the land of Israel. Uh, yeah, I'd be, if I was the king of Syria, I'd be afraid to mess with this guy. Wow. So in the days of that king, they no more went into the days of, uh, they no more went into a, uh, Samaria. However, there was a new king, and we're going to read about him in 24. Verse 24, 2 Kings chapter 6, verse 24. And it came to pass after this that Ben-Hadad, king of Syria, gathered all the host, his host and went up and besieged Samaria. And there was a great famine in Samaria. Now, you know, when you got an army... 
surrounding your city, uh, there's no food from the farmland going into the city. So eventually, people run out of food. Uh, that is what happened in Stalingrad. People were eating wallpaper paste during World War II. Um, all right. And there was a great famine in Samaria, and behold, they besieged it until an ass's head was sold for four score pieces of silver. That's 80 pieces of silver. And the fourth part of a cab of dove's dung for five pieces of silver. Um, can you imagine a, a dove taking a crap and being sold for food? And as the king of Israel was passing by upon the wall, there cried a woman unto him, saying, Help, my lord, O king. And he said, If the Lord do not help thee, whence shall I help thee? Out of the barn floor, uh, out of the wine press? And the king said unto her, What aileth thee? And she answered, This woman said unto me, Give thy son that we may eat him today, and we will eat my son tomorrow. There we they're, they resorted to cannibalism. They killed their own children. Verse 29. So we boiled my son and did eat him. And I said unto her on the next day, Give thy son that we may eat him. And she hath hid her son. And it, and it came to pass when the, herd, when the king heard the words of the woman that he rent his clothes and he passed, upon, uh, passed by upon the wall. And the people looked and behold, he had sackcloth upon his flesh people you want to know what real repentance is sitting in sackcloth and ashes that's real repentance then he said god do so and more also to me if the head of elisha the son of shaphat shall stand on him this day so here it is the king of Israel, instead of blaming their wickedness for the problems, they're blaming the prophet of God. Yeah. Verse 32. But Elisha sat in his house, and the elders sat with him, and the king sent a man from before him. But ere the messenger came to him, he said to the elders, Seek ye how this son of a murderer has sent to take away mine head? Look, when the messenger cometh, shut the door and hold him fast at the door. Is not the sound of his master's feet behind him? And while he yet talked with them, behold, the messenger came down unto him and said, Behold, this evil is of the Lord. What shall I wait for the Lord? What should I wait for the Lord any longer? Then Elisha said, Hear ye the word of the Lord. Thus saith the Lord, Tomorrow about this time shall a measure of fine flour be sold for a shekel and two measures of barley for a shekel in the gate of Samaria. Then a Lord on whose hand the Lord, uh, then a Lord on whose hand the king leaned, answered the man of God and said, Behold, if the Lord would make windows in heaven, might this thing be? And he said, Behold, thou shalt see it with thine eyes but shalt not eat thereof. You'll see it, but you're not going to eat. And there were four leprous men at the entering in of the gate, and they said one to another, Why sit we here until we die? If we say we will enter into the city, then the famine is in the city and we shall die there. And if we sit here, we, sh we die also. Now therefore come and let us fall into the host of the Assyrians. If they save us alive, we shall live. And if they kill us, we shall but die. You know, they, <laughs> that's called a, between a rock and a hard place. And they rose up in the twilight to go unto the camp of the Assyrians. And when they come, were come to the uttermost part of the camp, behold, there was no man there. For the Lord had made the host of the Assyrians to hear a noise of chariots and a noise of horses, even the noise of a great host. And they said one to another, Lo, the king 
of Israel hath hired against us the kings of the Hittites and the kings of the Egyptians to come upon us. Wherefore they arose and fled in the, in the twilight, left their tents and their horses and their asses, even the camp as it was, and fled for their life. So the Lord made them hear noise of chariots and horses. So they were scared and they, they, they left. Verse 8. And when these lepers came into the uttermost part of the camp, they went into one tent, and did eat and drink, and carried thence silver and gold and raiment, and went and hid it, and came again and entered into another tent, and carried thence also, and went and hid it. Then they said one to another, We do not well. We're not doing good. This day is a day of good tidings, and we hold our peace. If we tarry till the morning light, some mischief will come upon us. Now therefore come, that we may go and tell the king's household. So they went and called unto the porter of the city, and they told them, saying, We came to the camp of the Syrians, and, and behold, there was no man there, neither voice of men, but horses tied and asses tied, and the tents as they were. And he called the porters, and they told it to the king's house within. And the king arose in the night and said unto his servants, I will now show you what the Syrians have done to us. They know that we be hungry. Therefore are they gone out of the camp to hide themselves in the field, saying, When they come out of the city, we shall catch them alive and get into the city. And one of the servants answered and said, Let some take, I pray thee, five of the horses that remain which are left in the city. Behold, they are as all the multitude of Israel that are left in it. Behold, I say, they are even as all the multitude of the Israelites that are consumed. And let us send and see. So, yeah, let's go out and check it out, right? They, they took, therefore, two chariot horses, and the king sent after the host of the Syrians, saying, Go and see. And they went after them unto Jordan, and lo, all the way was full of garments and vessels, which the Syrians had cast away in their haste. And the messengers returned and told the king, and the people went out and spoiled the tents of the Syrians. So a measure of fine flour was sold for a shekel and two measures of barley for a shekel, according to the word of the Lord. Wow. And the king appointed the Lord on whose hand he leaned to have the charge of the gate and the people trode upon him in the gate. And he died as the man of God had said, who spake when the king came down to him. And it came to pass as the man of God had spoken to the king, saying, Two measures of barley for a shekel and a measure of fine flour for a shekel shall be to tomorrow about this time in the gate of Samaria. And the Lord answered the man of God and said, Now behold, if the Lord should make windows in heaven, might such a thing be? And he said, Behold, thou shalt see it with thine eyes, but shall not eat thereof. And so it fell out unto him, for the people trod upon him in the gate, and he died. Sounds like uh, he fell down and the people stampeded him. Oh, yeah. All right, I'm going to make this part one of the uh, Spirit Armies of the Lord. I'm going to do a part two because it looks like it's going to be pretty long. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor in Jesus' precious name. Amen.